Hello there. My name is Brandon from Grimdark Australia and welcome back ladies and gentlemen. Uh, today we're going to be taking you through the best and easiest way to paint your clone troopers and stormtroopers, uh, in my opinion. So what we're going to do is we're going to base out our model or prime our model in Steinal Res Grey Primer, which I've already done. Uh, and now, as you can see, I'm going around with a white color to build up some highlights. You could use a white ink. Uh, I find the white ink splutters in my air gun. I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong. Uh, but I, so in that case, I use Steinal Res White Primer, which uh, I find works quite well and I get a nice smooth transition. Now, make sure between each coat around this model you could probably do this over two or three coats just to build up a slow gradient from the gray areas up to the white areas uh, but leave the gray areas inside the thighs under the arms in the ribs all those general areas and create a nice smooth transition from dark to light This is a fantastic opportunity to practice on some trigger control for your airbrush uh, while you're building up these white highlights and moving around the model. So again, once you've got all your models looking good and you're happy with the highlights that you've gone through and done with your white primer, uh, we're then going to progress to the next stage, which is just going to be basing out all our accessory colors, uh, like the little capes on the back, the guns and the works. So for these guys in particular, you can do these in any color, but I'm using, I believe it's a Citadel Eschen Grey, uh, or it might be the old base paint, I think when they have the old foundation ones. Administorum Grey maybe? But regardless, use a dark grey, go through and do this. Uh, don't go quite uh, towards a black, especially on, along large areas like this, because we want to still give some tonal variation, and you don't always want black to be black black. Uh, you want it to be a dark grey and work your way back into a black with your shades and recesses. One thing to note that when we're adding in these extra colors is that we make sure we do the Games Workshop Classic and do two thin coats. This is so when we go through and do our unifying wash, we don't accidentally lift up any of the paint where it's a little thin. The next color we're going to go through is we're going to be doing the guns. For these, again, I keep them really simple. Uh, here I'm just using some Vallejo Game Air Black paint, uh, but you could use Citadel Abaddon Black, uh, you could use Black Templar Contrast paint, the world's your black oyster. Just get some dark colors on there. And side note! 
Uh, the reason I'm painting these black after just saying don't paint things in just a black fashion uh, is only because I want to differentiate the colors between the cloth and the gun material so it doesn't look like it is the exact same material. I think I stumbled on myself a bit there. Um, if you look at the Star Wars movies, the guns are typically a darker black metallic color. Uh, so that's what we're going to aim for these is just to stay a little bit more true to the actual movies. We'll just keep the guns a very dark black color. Once you've got those colors done, we're then going to start bringing in our color colors uh, and we're going to start adding a little bit more character to these models. Um, because we're painting these in our grimdark styled theme, uh, I think that adding these pops of color are very important to giving contrast to the models and giving them a little bit more brightness. Um, I'm not sure if that makes sense, but it's like you don't just want to be looking at a black and white and shades of grey model. Um, we want to add something in there to make the models pop a little bit more, give them some more character. Why do we care about these guys in such a grim and desolate setting? Uh, adding these pops of colour to me is one of the ways that we can do this. Uh, because it gives you more of an attachment to those characters. So like for this guy example, we're going to call him Red Handed. I don't know what he got caught red-handed doing. Maybe you can answer that and put something down in the comments for me and we'll make a story for him. So now we're just going to work around the model with our sponge chipping method. We've spoken about this in a couple of videos already, but basically just get your sponge, dab it onto some darker colored paint. You could use Rhinox Hide, you could use a, a darker black paint. The world's your limit uh, and just make sure you rub off a lot of that paint from the sponge and then just go around and lightly dab around the model anywhere where you think any chipping and stuff may occur for me I base it a lot around the leg area uh, and on the arms just anywhere where they might be ducking and rolling and weaving um, you can put some up on the chest area too because you got to think maybe they're ducking for cover grinding that body along the floor have some fun with it and see how it goes I will just touch lightly that normally when I do these chipping methods, uh, I do like to add either a orange spot of rust or a dash of silver metallic to simulate the paint getting worn down to bare metal. Uh, but in our Star Wars universe, the clone troopers don't generally wear metal armor. It's more of, I think it's like a plastic armor of some sort or a 
super strong resin maybe, I don't know. Um, but it's not going to rust, so we're just simulating it as paint coming off from the actual plastic itself. So that's why we haven't got any extra layers in the chipping. Now, we're going to do a quick run through on how I'm doing these Islander boys heads. Um, so for the shadowed areas and for the base color, we're starting with Rhinox Hide. And we're just going to go around, make sure you thin it down a little bit uh, and spread that out over the whole head, the hair, everything. Once you've done that guys, we're going to be taking a 50-50 mix of Bugman's Glow and Rhinox Hide, mix it up nice and well and thin it down a little bit so it's more of a glazed medium. Uh, and we're just going to start laying that in on the top of our face, uh, basically highlighted areas, which is going to be about 80% of the head. Uh, so we're looking at the top of the forehead there, the top of the cheekbones, the ears, the top of the nose, the side of the nose, the jawline, the lips. See how you go. If you need to use a smaller paintbrush, you can do this. Uh, be very careful that you don't splooge it out too much. Uh, and run it everywhere because then we've got to go back through and fix up a little bits and pieces but that's okay Then once that's dried out a little bit, we're going to be coming in with just a straight Bugman's Glow. Um, I tried to layer this on in lines, uh, so that way you can try and simulate sort of the uh, crinkle effect on the noses, and, uh, noses, foreheads, um, and give it that look. A little bit more of an aged and weathered look. After that, I would call your faces done. Next thing, once all the paints are cured and you've left them for at least 20 minutes, I generally leave them overnight just to be safe, uh, we're now going to take our unifying wash, which is going to be a 50-50 mix of Abtalong 502's black and some white spirits. Put that in a little container, spread it everywhere, put it all over the model. Once you're done with that, uh, we're going to put the model aside, finish the rest of them out, grab yourself a Q-tip, dunk it in some mineral spirits, and we're just going to slowly start dabbing away at our model. Now, you can see the magical effect of the wash seeping away to the recesses and leaving a really smooth shade. Um, the transition is just too good for comfort. Um, 
once you're done with this, you can leave it to dry overnight. You, if you're careful and there's not too much mineral spirits on the model left over, um, hit it from a distance with a hot hair dryer um, and just try and flash off that mineral spirit. But work your way around with your Q-tip. You can do this with a brush also. Um, and just make sure you're doing light dabbing motions and once it's dried up, we'll go around and we'll feather some of the, some of the areas to fix it up a bit. That's essentially almost it guys. You can play around with that oil wash as much as you like. Uh, once that mineral spirit is dried off, you can take a brush and sort of feather it around a little bit more. There's no real right or wrong way to do it. Just have some fun with it and just do what feels good. Um, next up, we're going to be doing the bases. I like to keep these bases really, really simple. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking a shitty old brush um, and I'm taking some pigment powder and some pigment fixer uh, and I'm just mixing the two and then I'm laying it down. Now this is a good way to keep the pigment down on the base uh, but I do find it changes the texture of the actual pigment powder and the look. Um, so what I do is I do this first, once that's dried up then I come in with some just straight pigment powder, no pigment fixer and I dab that into the top and I find that helps in the last part. But you're going to see that in a minute. Oh yeah, so see it kind of looks a little bit bland just like that. So now we're just going to take our straight pigment powder, uh, which has a little bit more of an orange tone when it hasn't got the fixer in it. Uh, so a little bit of variation in color there. You could use some even mix in some different colored pigment powders. Uh, also adds a little bit more texture in my opinion. And then once you've ready and done that, we're going to add this to the rest of the model as well. So generally I aim for the leg greaves, anything lower to the ground. Uh, occasionally I'll dabble this up onto the arms and stuff as well. But play around with it, remember less is usually sometimes more, and see how it looks. But with that, that's going to be it, guys. Uh, give this method a go. This is going to make your stormtroopers and clone troopers the best looking and most fierce feared troops on your tabletop. Uh, jump in, have a go. Now, if you guys can do me a favor, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, really helps out the channel and helps me know that you guys are appreciating the work that we've got so we can keep funneling our time into this for you. Stay tuned for some more awesome news coming up soon, like a new gaming store, a new gaming space, and other cool bits and pieces. See you on the next one, guys.